and a Donald Trump, Republican presidential candidate, a uh, real estate mogul, and TV personality is now joining us. First of all, thank you uh, for stopping by our show, Mr. Trump. Well, thank you, Colin. It's uh, really an honor. It was so funny. I was making a big speech, and I'm waiting in a hotel room, and I'm watching you the other day. And you're complaining that you didn't really want to watch the World Series because you wanted to watch me. Yes. And when you say that, I'll tell you what, you are my friend for life. That's I, okay. There we go. You know, there was. A, I want to talk about a lot of things. Most big brands avoid politics. Right. N- Nike doesn't want anything to do with politics. Right. Donald, you jumped into politics. Uh, were you concerned that it's not good for business? Well, you know, it's not good for business, actually, and it's not a positive from that standpoint. But I just felt I've seen so many things go so bad. I mean, you look at what's happening with our country, whether it's that Iran deal, which is such a catastrophe, which could have been good. If you look at our trade deals with all of the different countries that we deal with, they're all terrible. Every deal is terrible. We don't make good deals anymore. And I just looked at it. I love the country. And I looked at it. And I said, I'm going to do it. You know, it takes courage to run for president. Believe me, they really come at you 15 different ways. But I just didn't care. I wanted to do it. You know, uh, was there a moment when you're with your wife, was that when you're watching television with your family? And because, again, this was not like, hey, I'm going to go walk the dog. This is a life altering. You run an empire. Was there a moment of of clarity when you decided "I'm, I'm going to run for president? Well, you know the famous escalator scene where I'm coming down waving at the escalator with my wife in front of me, right? Yes, yes. So just a little before that, I said, you know, I knew I was going to do it because I announced it the day before. And, you know, something that I really was tentative about, and I'm usually not very tentative, and I was coming down and I just said, take a deep breath and let's do it because we have to straighten this thing out and what's going on. We just have to straighten it out. And so coming down that escalator, I'm saying, I'm looking at it and you, you probably didn't see it with thousands of, of all, so many different cameras and press that were going crazy. And I said, what am I doing? But ultimately I did it. And it does take a certain amount of courage. I think even if you're a politician, but for a politician less so, but I'm very happy I did it. It's been an amazing experience. I've, you know, there's been tremendous uh, disloyalty and, and there's been a really a tremendous dishonesty in the press. But there's also some great people in the press and some, you know, very talented people, very honest people. But I've, I've really seen some tremendous dishonesty in the press, which actually surprised me. You wrote a book. A called, little bit. Yeah. You, you wrote a book called Art of the Deal. And politics is often conciliatory. How would it sit with you knowing that you would go into a negotiation and for the betterment of the country or relationships, you couldn't get the best deal, but for the country, maybe you had to give? How would that sit with you? Well, I can see it happening. I mean, you're always not going to get the absolute best deal, but we can do a lot better than we've been doing. I mean, you know, with China, as an example, $400 billion a year, we have a trade imbalance, $400 billion a year. That's been going on for years with Japan, 70 to $75 billion a year trade. In other words, we're losing tremendous amounts of money. And I could go country after country and give you the numbers. It's just, it's frankly amazing that we even exist if you look at all these numbers. But the truth is, we cannot continue to do that. We can't continue. We've rebuilt China. We have literally rebuilt China. We've lost our jobs. We've lost our, our base, our manufacturing. So much we've lost. And I just felt, you know, that's what I do great at, and that's what I've been really good at. And I filed my papers, and people were really impressed when they saw my financials. And I don't say that from a braggadocious standpoint, but that's the kind of thinking we need in the country. So I'm really happy I did it, and it's been wild. And polls just came out a little while ago that show that I'm I'm easily number one, and I hope to take it to the end and, and do something that will make you very proud and happy. GOP contenders demand greater control over crucial debates, the Washington Post headline screams today. They think Donald Trump is getting too much coverage. How would you react to that? Well, you know, they had, it's like in your business, it's about ratings. One of the reasons you're so good, one of the reasons I happen to see you, and I've seen you many times before, but this one I'm watching, and you know, the name gets, my name gets mentioned, which was an honor, frankly. But the fact is that it's all about ratings. And whether we like it or not, it's all about ratings. And, you know, in the old days, prior to this cycle, they would have very few people watching these debates. You know that. You Yo, probably the, never watched one in your life. Networks maybe didn't would, want them. They didn't sure, want them. The, the networks literally didn't want them. They were forced to take them, and they didn't want them. 
And as an example, CNN took the number. They got the largest rating in the history of CNN, when you think of that, okay? I mean, you know, with all the catastrophes and all of the things they covered in the history of that, 24 million people almost. And Fox, as you know, had the largest rating in, I mean, bigger than NFL games, bigger than anything. So what happens, they had 24 million people, what happens is it's all about the ratings. And when I went on, I got these ratings, and I, I can understand why they ask me more questions, frankly. But, you know, when people are complaining about the other networks, I don't care too much. You know, you have to be able to answer the questions. And some of the people were extremely upset. Some of the candidates were extremely upset. I understand that. At the same time, you know, the one that was really, uh, I thought, spoken to by Harwood pretty nastily was me, because he always had a little wise guy, a little wisecrack that was obviously just manufactured, you know, sometime prior to the to him reading it off the paper. But uh, you know, ultimately it is what it is and I love I loved I've never, you know, debated these guys politicians that's all they do. They talk, they're all talk no action. They debate their whole life is a debate. What happened is, you know, I've done really well in the debates and Every time we have a debate, my poll numbers seem to go up, and the, the polls that they take as to who won the debate, every single one of them said Trump won. So I like the debating stuff, but they did treat I, – I would say they treated us pretty unfairly compared to, let's say, Hillary and some yeah, of the other Yeah, I, I think even reasonable, moderate, left-leaning voices thought it was handled poorly. I, right. I, want I to, agree. I, I want to segue into something. Terry Collins made a move last night. I've defended him. But it was about – he said he chose his heart uh, over his head about Matt Harvey. And when you make deals – listen, you're human. People are going to tick you off. You're going to get right. upset. Do you ever make a deal – where you don't make it with your head, and you do make it with your heart. What What's the percentage? When you make big decisions, you could make them with other countries. How much is cerebral? How much is gut? Well, sometimes you have the iconic deal. Like, you know, to go back into your business, Doral was one of them, but it's worked out great. I bought Doral, you know, the great yes, yes. country club in Miami. Another one that's incredible is, is Turnberry in Scotland. I own Turnberry in Scotland. I bought it a few years ago. And I do that to a certain extent with my heart, and I do it also, I think, with my head, but maybe a little bit less. So, you know, if I'm buying something where I'm looking for return on investment, uh, it's a little bit different. But it's a little bit like with, with especially with Turnberry, you know, when you look at the great term, one of the greatest courses, maybe a lot of people think it's the greatest course in the world, but one of the greatest places in the world where they have the British Open oftentimes. That was the, they say the single best match in the history of golf. That was Tom Watson against Jack Nicholas, the duel in the sun in 1977. Yes. And, you know, when you buy something like that, I tend to look at it differently. It's not necessarily return on investment. Okay. But those, those deals, oftentimes, though, I will say, Colin, they turn out to be great deals because it's almost like buying a great painting. You don't know why it's so valuable, but it turns out to be more valuable than you even think. People worry, Steve Forbes, Ross Perot, they don't connect with Americans. They're too rich. When's the last time somebody said no to Donald Trump? Well, I mean, it doesn't happen often, but, you know, the, the thing, and I think you understand this, we really have connected because I've dealt – in the construction industry with the unions. I've dealt with the construction workers. I've dealt with the non-unions. I've dealt with everything. And I have a great relationship with people, uh, with the police, with the firemen, with the builders, with the construction trades. I mean, I've just always had a great relationship. And somehow it really, I mean, Mitt Romney didn't connect, if you look at it, because so many people sat home, they never went and voted. They didn't want to vote for him for yeah. whatever reason, but they didn't want to vote for him. But we are connecting. And I think we're connecting big league when, you know, when I go out and do a speech like the one that I did just before when I was watching you, you know, thousands and thousands of people. And here I and I ended up being late because I'm watching what you're saying. I mean, it's one of those things. But that just shows, hey, that just shows your talent. That's right. Let's let's get to that. <laughs> Donald Trump. I just, I just spoke with a, a man that respects you a lot, uh, Al Michaels, who's a terrific guy. And he has a lot. He heard I was on your show. And he said, I love Collins. So Al Michaels is a big fan of yours. That's nice. Well, Republican presidential candidate uh, Donald Trump is joining us. Um, I said this about before you, Simon Cowell was probably, you know, there's a handful of people, Bill O'Reilly, uh, Simon Cowell, the, people that are seen as cutting through and uh, no BS. Um, aren't you a little surprised, uh, Donald, a little surprised at your acceleration through this process, a little that you got this popular this fast? 
Well, I think that if you talk about the speed, I might be surprised. You know, I wouldn't have done it if I thought I couldn't have won. So I guess you have to say, well, gee, but maybe I was going to sort of edge it out at the end. And who knows? And maybe I still won't. I don't know what's going to happen. You never know. I mean, I'm running against people, some of whom are smart, not all, to be honest with you. How many of these of guys would you hire? I'm serious. A percentage of them. Not uh, all of them. Okay, well, the them, GOP but, guys, but when you're on that stand, I see you sometimes. I see you, and I see how you lick. You don't roll your eyes, but I can tell. How many of those people would you hire in a top position for a transactional position in your empire? Well, uh, let's just say there's a, a percentage of them, okay, but not all of them. I mean, okay. I, I, I'm not impressed with all of them, and, and some I am impressed with, frankly. I mean, you have some good talent up there and some very smart people, and some of them you don't see that as much during a debate, to be honest with you. But you do have some really smart you – look, you have people that are governors and senators, and you have some very smart people up there. So we'll see what happens. Do you think Jeb Bush wants to be president or feels pressured to be? I think he's under a tremendous amount of pressure. He doesn't look like, you know, they were saying at the beginning, before I came down, uh, Maureen Dowd wrote a piece yesterday, which was very devastating. She was sort of saying that he felt it was his, and then I came down. And, you know, I, I had an expression, which I really felt that was, you know, I talked about a low-energy individual. And yes, I feel he's yes. A very low-energy individual. And if you're dealing with China... These people send in fierce, fierce negotiators. These are fierce people. And, you know, we don't need low energy, okay? I don't think, frankly, Rubio is going to make it. I think, to me, he's a lightweight, okay? So you see that. And you, we need very strong people because our country is being taken away like candy from a baby. It's like candy from a baby. That's what's happening to our country. And we need strong people. We need the Tom Brady of of negotiators. We need... You know, and by the way, Tom is somebody I know who is did, did, such a great guy. Did but you we talk, need the Tom Brady of, of dealers because we can't continue to make horrible, horrible trade deals, stupid deals with Iran where we're giving them $150 billion. I, I mean, it could have been so easy to change. You double up in the sanctions for a little while. They would have come to the table in three days, and they would have given you everything you wanted. Let, so people are tired of it, and I let, think that's why I've resonated. They're just tired of it. Well, let, let me play devil's advocate. Okay. The real estate, at least in coastal properties, is through the roof. Inflation steady. Gas is three dollars a gallon. The stock market's up. Um, economy uh, unemployment's down. That all this anti-Obama stuff—it's a little overstated. ISIS isn't necessarily his fault, and maybe we're just too hard on all the presidents. We hate all of them. Nobody likes any president in any country, and that really the country's not that terrible. Well, it's not an easy situation. There's no question about it. But if they had left the troops there, I was totally against going into Iraq, totally, because I said, you're going to destabilize. And I wrote it and it came out and they even sent people to talk to me from the White House, because whatever it is, I get, I seem to get publicity, a lot of publicity. And yeah. so I was totally against it. Because it and, and yet I'm a very militaristic person. Yes. But I was against it because I said, you're going to destabilize. Once they were there, I said, if you're going to leave, take the oil. Well, everyone thought that was a horrible statement because it was so nasty. Well, ISIS took the oil, and uh, Iran is taking the oil. And here we spent $2 trillion on Iran. You take a look, $2 trillion, thousands of lives, uh, wounded warriors all over the place who I love, the incredible people, what they're going through. But wounded warriors, and we have nothing. We have absolutely nothing. Obama made a big mistake. We shouldn't have gone in, but he should have never pulled them out the way okay. he did. And never pulled them out. So there were a lot of mistakes. And remember this. We have a workforce. We have 100 million people right now. We have 100 million that want to work. They want to work, and they're not working. You know, the unemployment number is a false number. It's probably close to 30 percent because we have all these people wanting to work. And if you look at standard of living, if you look at wages, where they've gone over the last you know 12 years, which precedes him in all fairness, but you look at over a period of a decade – People are doing so much worse than they used to do. So I'm just saying we can do a lot better. So many, so many places have taken our jobs. They've taken so much out of this country. They've taken our money. The amazing thing is you look at what China's done to us. They've taken so much of our money. They've taken our jobs. And we owe them right now $1.5 trillion. Figure that one out. So. I got a couple of things I want to get to with Donald Go Trump. Ahead. The NFL has been, uh, to me, tone deaf on domestic violence. You're intimidating. You're Donald Trump. People don't want to say no. How do you not become tone deaf on issues when you are big and powerful like the NFL? Well, they're tone deaf on domestic violence. How can, can you choose a running mate that will look you in the eye and say, Mr. Trump, you're wrong? 
Are you willing to do that? Well, I think so. I think that's what I'd want to do. I'd want to get somebody that could really help me, somebody that could do the right job. You're right about the NFL. The NFL has handled the whole a lot of situations pretty badly. It's embarrassing. And it continues on. I hope they don't soften the game up too much, by the way, I must say. And people will say, oh, that's terrible for you to say. I was reading yesterday where they're going to not do the kickbacks and they're not going to do this. I mean, eventually, you know, you're not going to have maybe the same game. They have to be careful with that, I think. I don't know how you feel about that, Colin. Well, I, 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 I think for litigious reasons, Reasons, litigation reasons, I think you do have to at least make every effort to make the game as safe and have some transparency. Now, I let's yeah. let's segue to don't get, make it too politically correct. You know what we're doing in the country, though. Everything has to be. Don't make it too politically correct, right? Yeah, it's a violent game. There's violence. Yeah, it's a violent game. And, yes, I mean, that's it's a violent game. I, I I lived in Vegas for seven years, so I'm pretty pro gambling. I don't think I think the stigma's worn off. It's like divorce fifty right. years ago. People get divorced. People gamble. You right. there was a fantasy football moment during the past debate and uh, Chris Christie was outspoken, thought it was a ridiculous thing but I do right. think it will become something where commissioners now are embracing it. Are you pro or anti-fantasy and gambling? Well, I'm okay with it because it's happening anyway. You know, whether you whether you have it or you don't have it, you have it. You understand that better yes. than anybody. Right. It's all over the place. I thought the question though, in that forum, you know, where we're talking about foreign trade, we're talking about wars, we're talking about, it was a sort of a ridiculous question. And unfortunately for Bush, he didn't say the right thing. He said, he started talking about it as a very serious topic, saying how well he does at fantasy football. And Christie took that one away from him and frankly made him look bad. He had a very bad night. I mean, when you get right down to it, Bush yeah. had a rough, he had a rough time. He but, did. But, uh, you know, it was interesting to watch, but it was a tough evening. Uh, Tom Brady said you gave him a motivational speech. What would you say to Tom Brady, a very driven individual, to give him motivation? Well, Tom is somebody, and I tell him all the time, I mean, I think he's just one of the great athletes. But when you look, even last week with the pass he threw, that was such a beautiful pass. Like, what was it, 15 yards? Right there. In, right through the two defenders that were on each side of the ball. They, you know, when yes, they show right that there. in slow motion, the hand, you know, a quarter of a second later is covering up the lane, right? It just right into the, the gut of the receiver who did a good job in catching it. But Tom is somebody that does, you know, I play golf with Tom. Tom is, is one of those few people that ends up doing better under pressure. Yes. Jack Nicklaus, as an example. Why? Tiger in his prime. Why? So many different, you're born with it. You're born with it. You, you can't teach it. You're born with it. You know, they have all sorts of uh, psychoanalysts and everything else. You're born with it. I've seen it over the years, and you don't see it often. It's very rare. But And you'll see it with the great champions. Tom is one of them. You'll see it with Jack Nicklaus. You'll see it with, you know, different people right. where they do better under pressure. There aren't many of them, Colin, I'll tell you what. But when you have them, it's very special to see. Uh, if you could own in any league one team, be it for the valuation, the brand, the love, the heart, one team in any league. I know it's a softball sports question, but a friend of mine said, ask him. He's fascinated by it, and I like my friend. So what would it be? Well, you know, I'm from New York, and I guess I'd say maybe the Yankees or, you know, George Steinberg was a great friend of mine, did a great job, and the Mets did a great job this year, even though they lost, that was a tough loss for them. But but uh, even though they lost, I think uh, Fred Wilpon and Jeff Wilpon did a really good job. This year, they did a really good job, and, you know, they So you don't, you'd buy the Yankees? But I, w I would really always say the Yankees. You know, okay. I, I think Dallas and different teams, are the football Dallas, uh, I think they're really – well thought of from the standpoint of monetary value. But, you know, I'm from New York. I would say the Yankees, maybe. Okay. Uh, a couple of things here. I see where you and John Oliver, HBO guy, got into a little Twitter thing. Um, he is saying that uh, we did not invite Donald on the show, and you said you invited me, and I wasn't interested. Your show was boring. Can you clarify what's going on there? Well, I don't know much about him. It's sort of interesting. And I, all of a sudden I see, because I have at real Donald Trump, the big uh, yes, you know, I see crazy. It. I have millions and millions of people. Do you go on there? You're on there, right? That's I you. do. Yeah, I do. Okay, I mean, okay. I have millions of people between that and Facebook. And and all of a sudden I see people saying that John Oliver, and I'm saying, John Oliver, and I checked with my people. He asked me to be on the show four or five times. And I, I don't even hardly know who he was. I wouldn't know what he looks like, but he asked me to be on the show. And we said no, because I can't, not because of disrespect for him, because I'm, you know, I have a lot of things that are going on right now. So I couldn't do the show. And then all of a sudden he said, I would never have Trump in the show. I said, wasn't that the guy that was really wanting me badly on the show. So rather than a lot of people wouldn't say that, they just let it die. I don't like to let things die, Colin. You know, I said, hey, yes, look, yes. he asked me to be on the show. I said no. 
Then he goes out and he goes, I wouldn't want him on the show. Well, that's just a lie. That's like the guy when the question during the debate the other night, I said, I negotiated the debate down from three hours to two. And Harwood, who made a total fool out of himself, John Harwood, the guy from yes, Tennessee, yes, he, made a total fool out of himself. He said, it was never three. It was never three. Well, it was three. Every document will show it. Every every news, you know, it was in the newspapers at three. They changed it at the end because they sold for so much. I mean, it was I think two hundred and fifty thousand dollars as opposed to two or three thousand dollars, and you know, for a thirty second commercial. So they sold it, and they wanted to make it longer. And I got on, and I said, "You're not going to make it longer. It's not going to happen." And because who wants to be who wants to be watching that debate for three hours? It's long it's, enough for two hours. It's, it's like the Oscars. Give me ninety yeah. minutes. All right, I got to so ask. Har- you- so what Harwood did is he said something that wasn't so, and it was the same thing with Oliver. And I figure, I don't know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I'd rather call somebody out than let it go unnoticed. Okay, and uh, I got to ask this. It's my news background. Summer protesting your upcoming Saturday Night Live guest hosting appearance. Do you think NBC and Lauren Michaels cave, cancel the gig? What is your feeling on that? No, I think they, they, a lot of people are saying they'll have the highest ratings that they've had in many years. So you I feel they're going to they're stand behind you? Oh, well, they've already said it. And, okay. you know, I get along great with the Hispanics. This is the Hispanic. I, I, have, I have thousands that work for me. We have an amazing company. We have thousands of Hispanics. They're great people. And I think I'm going to win the Hispanic vote. No, no, Lauren is going to be. I mean, I hate to say this. It only makes the show hotter. You understand what I mean? Yes. It makes the show hotter. But no, no, Lauren is 100 percent and he wants to do it. In fact, I'm going to see him in about one hour from now because we're going over. We're going to start that process. You know, it's a pretty tough process. It's a it's a process where they choose the different skits. I did it 11 years ago. And The Apprentice was became one of the yes. top shows on television, and they asked me if I'd host it. So I hosted it a while ago, and it was it was great. Now, Lauren is all set. It actu- it makes it hotter, and I think the show is going to be great. Okay, I, we got to. I can take it to fifty two. I've been told by your people. I've got to get out of here. If you choose a running mate, will it be among the current candidates, or will it be somebody outside that you've had again transactional opportunities and part of your, you know, your your family? Will it be somebody in military, which you have a strong background? Right. Who would you choose if I could get you down for a running mate? Well, it's very early, and so I don't like to, you know, first I want to win. I don't like to talk. You know, a lot of people, they talk, and they talk too much, and they talk about, like, who they're going to choose. In the meantime, they don't win. So I want to focus on winning. So it's too soon. But there could be a potential couple of people up on that stage that I like, because I do. I like a few of them a lot. So that you could called, happen. You called Rubio a lightweight. It would not be him, right? Uh, most likely not. I mean, I would think not. You know, it's a little bit tough. You couldn't have a doctor. Me. You wouldn't want it. Was, so let's let's eliminate Ben Carson and Rubio. We're getting close here. Would it be Jeb Bush? <laughs> Just keep going for another 10 minutes, you'll get right down to it. No, there are really some people that I really think are, you know, pretty terrific people on the stage. That doesn't mean I choose one of them, but I just want to see if, you know, I want to win it first and then I'll worry about it. I don't like people that talk too early, you know, the problem with this country. I'll give you an example. We send 50 men over, 50 really great men to, over to Syria, right? Yeah. And President Obama announces it. He should be announcing it because now there's a target. They are looking for those 50 men. If he didn't announce it, those men could do their job and and women. They could do their job much, much better. It would be so much better. But when you announce, so I don't like doing a lot of talking. I like, believe it or not, I like action and I want to win first and I'll make a good choice and I'll make a choice that you'll like. And it could be on the stage, but you know, it's possible that it would be someplace else. All right, GOP, political leading candidate for President Donald Trump, real estate mogul, TV personality. He's got a lot of people wanting his time. We are running out of it. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you very much, Colin. Great honor. Thank you.